recording for a very long time, and this is just one evening we get together to enjoy and to elevate ourselves and motivate ourselves right before we go into November 8th, right? Um, and, and thank you, Bill Ferguson. I am so honored. I've had a close relationship with Mike Miller, and a year, year and a half ago, I got to meet the Senate caucus and Bill Ferguson, and I gotta tell you, I, I think his belief in me is my reflection in my belief of you and this whole Hartford County, and all of Hartford County. Because I know when I go door to door and I meet people, I meet Democrats, I meet independents, and I meet moderate Republicans. And what they tell me is they've been forgotten, they've been neglected, and they, they're not listened to in Hartford, they're not listened to in Annapolis. Um, they care about schools, they care about the environment, they care about public safety. But to be honest with you, our current senator's about to leave, and the fellow that blew in from New Jersey via Paul North County, and I suspect will be leaving here shortly. <laughs> Let's make him leave here shortly. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's not what they're doing. I call it shenanigans in, in Annapolis. It was our local press, so you're not really aware of this, but in Annapolis, these guys, like to do hyperpartisan stuff, they like to grandstand, it's performative, it makes them feel good, but they're not carrying the needs, wishes, and aspirations of our community down to, Har down to Annapolis. And I spent 16 years doing that, and it's crushing me not to see that voice in Annapolis. This area, District 34, Aberdeen, Fowler, Air, Haverty Grace, this is the economic engine, the cultural mecca of our county. What happens here will define what happens to the future of Harper County. And I believe that we need a leader who really cares about this. I'm going to give you two. Of, I came up with 24, but I'm going to give you just two. 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 Yes, you, do you want to listen to my dissertation? I'm going to just give you two examples. I got some more crap, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even had my drink yet. I'm just going to give you two examples of things that are so unique to where you're standing and along this area. One, we are at the top of the bay, and this is the mighty Susquehanna River meeting the Chesapeake Bay. But right up the river from us is the Conowingo Dam. And I don't know if any of you saw this but there was a heartbreaking accord in the Baltimore Center by the Washington Post that for 50 years we have not been meeting our big cleanup goals. We're lagging terribly. Now, why is this so important for where we live? Because the Conowingo Dam has millions of tons of toxic sludge. And I'm old enough, I was little, but I was old enough when Hurricane Agnes took all that sludge over the top of the bay. And this was a brownout. Right in front of my farm, which is not far from here, everything died. Thank you. <laughs> everything died. The wildlife left. And while that has been slowly coming back, the, the guy that's in the office now and the guy that wants to replace him on the opposite side either don't know or don't care about that. And if that happens to this area, it will devastate us, not only economically, environmentally, but just in our quality of life. That's number one issue. The other is a more uplifting issue in a way. It's the Aberdeen Proving Ground. It is a, our largest employer. It's a mega base. As Barbara Wilkowski used to tell me, and boy was she a champion. I love Barbara. She kissed, brought me over one time we were having a meeting, and she told all these big ones, listen to this woman. She's low. She like, right? that was great. And she said to me, this is a mega base, one of four in the country. And what I tried to do right as I was leaving was I created something called Brand MP. Don't worry about what it stands for. What it means is that I created a private-public partnership with the Aberdeen Proving Ground. Why? Because they have so much technology and brain trust and we want to partner with them in the private sector to bring in uh, uh, scientists, entrepreneurs, startups, so that we can uplift this whole community. It's not just for the scientists, it's for people right out of high school people that can be trained. Now that has languished. Why? Because the senators are either indifferent or don't care about it. So I'm just giving you just those two examples of what a senator who loves this community, cares deeply about this community, wants to do if I'm elected. So that's just, just a little bit. 
Now, I want to turn to my attention to the campaign, and I've got to thank some people. Um, first of all, my husband, Brian Haynes. Now, Brian's a little more liberal than I am, but that's good, right? That's good. But what he really is is a man who picks me up when I come home, uh, uplifts me, has a great sense of humor. And as many of you know, door knocks with the best of us every dang day we go out. And he works full time uh, at the Aberdeen Brewing Ground. <laughs> um, and also, I've got to recognize two young men. Among many, Anthony Lyon is my campaign manager, my right hand. Yes. Many of you know, one of the candidates know, Anthony is the one that keeps us all organized. Anthony is the one that has built up 15 or 20 volunteers every Saturday and Sunday. We meet thousands of people. That's Anthony Lyon, and he's worked with the House members, he's worked with some local candidates, and I couldn't, couldn't thank him more, and he's done a great job. And then, right next to him is Langston. Langston, uh, <laughs> And Bill Ferguson had the foresight to create a wonderful fellowship program to help young people get involved in campaigns. And Langston joined us for the general, and he's been out there knocking on the doors, always in a uh, upbeat mood. And together, they, as I said, gotten so many volunteers to help us. Um, you know, it is a heavy lift in this county, um, and um, you have to have a lot of persistence. And I just want to tell you two stories from my own family that keep me going. My dad, who some of you know, had a 40-year, pretty illustrious career. Well, when he started out, he came in fifth in a five-man race, right? <laughs> and he said, he picked himself back up. A few people noticed. A few people noticed my effort last time. And they got, he got back out and ran again. And then, even when he was president of the Senate, he did something visionary and important for the state which is to allow 95. Local politicians beat the poop out of him and said, you've ruined the county. Rudy 40 will die and all this sort of stuff. And they, that was it. He was going to be just finished. Well, the president of the Senate walked this county, knocked on the doors the way we are, and he won by 57 votes, yes. but he won. And then even for myself, not to get emotional, but I hope I'm a bit of an example of what happened to me in 2018 our family, that we picked ourselves back up. We believe in this county, we believe in our family, and we believe that we want to show people, don't you ever give up on this county, or the Democrats, and we're going to change things up here. So I want to thank everybody for coming tonight, and I want to thank all the people that have helped me, and let's win! Let's win on November!